OK, let's see um, how I would do. I would notice that this is actually x cubed squared plus x cubed minus 6 equals 0. So if I make a little substitution, let's let g equal x cubed, then what would I see? Well, what I see is g squared plus g minus 6 equals 0. Let's factor that equals 0. So I'd see a plus and a minus, two numbers whose product is negative 6 but combined nicely to give plus 1. So plus 3 and minus 2 work. And so I see that g equals negative 3. That's what makes that 0. Or this thing is 0, g equals 2. Great. Well, I'm not out of the woods yet because I have to put back x. So I see that x cubed equals minus 3. Or the other possibility is that x cubed equals 2. And so what are the real solutions to these things? Well, I can just take the cube roots of both sides. If I take the cube root of this side, so let me actually move this up a little teeny bit. The cube root of this side is cube root x cubed equals the cube root of minus 3. I'd see x equals, now you might say, oh, you can't take the, the cube root of a negative. You sure can. You can take cube roots of, of uh, I'm sorry, you can take odd roots of any negative things. The negative sign pops out, right? Because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So I have minus the cube root of 3. And on this side, if I take the cube root of both sides here, I see that x equals the cube root of 2. And so what I see here are two real solutions. One is x equals minus the cube root of 3, and the other one is x equals the cube root of 2. Remember, these are cube roots, not square roots. So this thing, actually, this original equation has two real solutions, and we just found them. They're this and that. OK, but again, the important thing is to realize that I was able to convert it to something that looks quadratic, solve the quadratic, and then bring back what we're doing. OK, that's it for those fancy hidden quadratic-looking things. I'll stop here. <laughs>